Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. Afib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be talking about cardioversions and how they can be helpful for patients who have atrial fibrillation. So first of all, what is a cardioversion? A cardioversion is an electrical shock to your heart to try to get re reset your heart and get you out of atrial fibrillation. You may have seen um, in TV and the movies when somebody's heart stops and they take the paddles and they paddle somebody and give them the electrical shock to bring them back to life. Uh, cardioversion is pretty much exactly the same thing except a lot less dramatic as, as I, t I tell my patients. Um, basically what happens is that you get an electrical current applied to your heart to reset your heart and to try to uh, bring you out of AFib and then back into normal rhythm. I tell patients that it's kind of like when either your telephone or your computer is not working and you turn it off and you turn it back on again to, re to reset it. Same exact principle, same exact idea in terms of what a cardioversion actually does. Um, now you may see uh, YouTube videos of somebody getting a cardioversion and it's very painful and you see them jumping out of the chair and again that's a very dramatic example. And in an emergency setting uh, where people need to get a cardioversion done for usually something that's life-threatening. Uh, you know, they don't have always have the exact the right amount of time to actually give people proper sedation and it can be uh, very painful. However, when you get at a cardioversion set up with your doctor and it's set up as an appointment, I always schedule mine with an anesthesiologist so that makes sure that you don't feel anything. And so typically you're giving very strong sedation medication but which only lasts but for a few minutes. Once you're deep into sleep, we go ahead and do, do the shock treatment, which these days involves putting pads on your chest in the front as well as in the back and applying that electrical current. So why do a cardioversion? What's the benefit of doing a cardioversion? Well, the main benefit is to get somebody out of atrial fibr fibrillation. And, you know, well, does a cardioversion work? Does it actually get somebody out of atrial fibrillation? So I usually tell my patients that the cardioversion usually works. In my experience, the actual shock treatment uh, works probably about 90% of the time to actually get you out of atrial fibrillation. Now, that doesn't mean the atrial fibrillation can't come back. You know, there's an inherent short circuit problem or a problem with your heart which is triggering episodes of atrial fibrillation. So the AFib may come back an hour later, a week later, a year later, you know, but the cardioversion typically works with most success rate in that actual moment of time to get you out of atrial fibrillation. Uh, usually medical changes in medication are required after the cardioversion in order to help keep you in a norm normal rhythm. So those are sort of the reasons how it helps and why it may be beneficial. This is only beneficial for people who are in what's called persistent atrial fibrillation, meaning you're in atrial fibrillation all the time. If your AFib episodes come and go, a cardioversion is not the right treatment for you. But if you're in AFib consistently, uh, it may be a beneficial uh, a treatment option for you. However, I will say when it comes to the success rate of a cardioversion, the longer somebody is in AFib, the less likely the, a the cardioversion will be successful. As I've mentioned several times, the more people are in atrial fibrillation, the longer time goes by, the heart inherently changes, and then it makes it much harder to stop or uh, cardiovert the age of fibrillation. So if somebody's been in AFib consistently for a couple of years, I usually don't even uh, try a cardioversion because the success rate will, can be pretty low. But if you've been in AFib for several months or even a year, it can be beneficial and it can be uh, sex successful. So again, how does a cardioversion work? So it's typically scheduled as an appointment uh, with your doctor. Uh, in my case, I always schedule it with an anesthesiologist. You get an IV put in place. Uh, once everything is in position and ready, uh, you get heavy sedation medication which will only put you to sleep for only a few minutes. And once you're nice and asleep, we apply this electrical current to your heart to help reset your heart. Uh, typically only takes but a few seconds to do. Uh, once you're nice and awake, it usually only takes about half an hour or so from the sedation medications. Typically patients can go home. Again, I typically require medication adjustments after cardioversion in order to improve the uh, success rate. Um, when it comes to the cardioversion shock, uh, there's different ways to actually deliver that shock. There's different levels of energy. Um, there's very low amounts and there's higher amounts. And people, uh, depending on their size, the larger people, people who are more, who are more overweight, are going to require higher energy because you just have to get through more tissue to actually try to reset your heart. So this can be a very useful st treatment strategy for a lot of patients. So when do I recommend cardioversions to my patients? 
Uh, one uh, would be when they have symptoms and they need something done very quickly. Uh, if I see a patient in my office and they are very short of breath or very tired, I will do a cardioversion on them quickly because that's probably the most rapid thing that I can offer to them. I can offer them cardioversion even the same day or the, or the next day to help get them out of AFib and improve their symptoms. Long term other options such as an ablation may work better but in the short term quick fix cardioversion can be a very useful treatment option. Another way in which a cardioversion may be a useful treatment option is if for people who have very subtle symptoms and you don't really know if it's the AFib or not. Um, if you have AFib and you're consistently in AFib and you feel tired or run down or short of breath but all your numbers look okay, the heart rate is okay, the heart function is okay, but it's not really clear if it's the AFib itself causing some of these additional subtle symptoms, the only way to know for sure is a bit of trial and error and that is to get you out of atrial fibrillation. And in these type of people I typically would give a trial of cardioversion to see if it actually is helpful, can we get you out of AFib, does it change anything about how you feel. Now what are the risks of a cardioversion? You know, cardioversion is a usually uh, pretty straightforward procedure. Uh, it's a procedure that I tend to do first in people who I think are too sick or have too many medical conditions to undergo more aggressive treatment options like an ablation. So it is a treatment of choice that is a, although it sounds pretty dramatic to have a shock done to your heart, it's actually much more benign compared to other treatments and other procedures that are done for atrial fibrillation. So what are the main risks involved? The main risks involved are doing it if you have a blood clot inside of your heart because that blood clot if you apply a shock may potentially dislodge and can give people a, a risk for stroke. So there's a few ways to mitigate that, ri that risk of blood clot and that risk of stroke during a cardioversion. One, uh, if somebody's on blood thinners consistently, if I have my patients on blood thinners consistently for over two months, the chances of having a, a blood clot are very low and usually we can proceed straight with a cardioversion. But for people who do not take strong blood thinners or they have not been on strong blood thinners for very long, I usually check them for a blood clot with what's called a transesophageal echo. Usually to get, I usually do it together all at the same time. Uh, when they're asleep, I put a tube about the size of my finger down your mouth and into your esophagus and that takes very clear pictures of your, of your heart just to make sure there's no signs of a blood clot. Provided that that's clear, right then and there we do the cardioversion and get the person back into a normal rhythm. So that's how we mitigate sort of the main risk. I do have patients who have asked me, you know, what happens if you restart your heart and it doesn't want to come back or go, comes back too slow. Uh, fortunately, I have not seen that happen. Uh, the heart is very resilient and it comes back. Uh, there are times it can be very slow after a cardioversion and uh, require a decrease in medications. Uh, there's actually only been one time in the hundreds of cardioversions that I've done where a patient was so slow I ended up needing to have to put a pacemaker afterwards. Uh, but that is very, very rare. Usually the heart rate is perfectly acceptable uh, after a cardioversion. But again, it does require some medication adjustments. But for many people, a cardioversion can be a very successful uh, treatment option to provide rapid relief for symptoms from, from atrial fibrillation. And it can be it's not nearly as dramatic as the videos that you see on, on YouTube when done in a nice controlled setting and, when you're, and the pain is controlled adequately and your sedation is controlled adequately. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.